Hey, I think I'm live. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm going to try and change the camera over to uh, the, the kind of better camera that I've got. Let's see if I can do that. It looks like it's using the uh, the built-in webcam. Let's see if we can change that. First time I've done a live stream, so uh, apologies if this goes badly. Um, I thought let's. I thought we'd kind of try it out. Um, let's see. So how do we do this? So we've got. A microphone icon. That's about it. <laughs> Let me just see if I can change this on here. I don't think we can. Um, but hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, what I thought I'd do is my first ever live chat um, or, or live stream, just so we could talk about Tesla, um, talk about business stuff if you want. Um, but let me know. I've got the comments here on the right hand side. So let me know if you've got any questions at all, and we can kind of fire through them. If there's anything Tesla related, like the the version 11 has just come out, and I've been using that over the first few weeks. Uh, let me know where your name, where you're from, what you'd like to talk about, and, and we can get this started. Um, I'm just going to quickly see if I can um, change the camera. I've got a really good camera set up here, and for some reason, it's using the, the webcam. So I'm just going to go to edit here. But in the meantime, do leave a comment on the right-hand side. Just let me know your name, where you're from, and uh, I'll give you a little shout-out. Let's just see if we can do this. And then we'll go properly live in a few moments. Um, and just let me know, can you hear me okay as well? Um, because it's not selecting the, the camera that I wanted to select. But we'll just go with it if not. So hey, I'll check out the comments. Hey, Fred, Fred sucks at Minecraft. Hello, Mr. Man. Hi, Matt. Hello. Um, Fred, are public charges always good? Or do they sometimes not work? First question. Um, to be honest, most of the Tesla ones are absolutely perfect, work really, really well. You will get some public ones like at uh, Tesco's or Pod Points. I have had a bit of issues with them, but generally they're, they're pretty good. But the Tesla ones are the best. Hey, Matt. Um, hi, Mark. I've used, a lot of, uh, I've used a lot of your videos to learn things before I picked up the Model 3. Well, that's great to know. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying your Model 3, Matt. Which uh, color did you go for? Um, how do you get the heated steering wheel? That just comes with the 2021 and onwards models. Brilliant, cool. So it's all looking good. The only thing we've got bad here is the uh, the webcam that I just cannot seem to change. So I'll try and get that set up for, for another um, video. But in the meantime, I'll just see if anyone else joins. Hello, PR, hope you're doing well. I'm thinking about getting the Tesla Model 3 long range midnight silver when I can drive. Nice color, nice color. Um, so yeah, in this video, I thought we'd maybe talk about the version 11 um, Tesla software that's just come out. If you've got that, let me know your thoughts on that. Um, also, Tesla in general, maybe you haven't got a Tesla. I know about half the people who subscribe to my channel, half have a Tesla, half are thinking of getting one, half, well, in, in the half who haven't got one, half are fans, so may have some questions. Uh, hey, Mark, how are we doing? Mark from Kent. New uh, Model 3 Black. Nice. Good choice. Good choice. I do like the black. Tyrone, when we getting FSD beta in the UK? I don't know. <laughs> Hello. And um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It seems to be really delayed. And it's one of the few things that surprised me since having a Tesla, how they can sort of sell you something that isn't available. The promise is that if you get it early or, you know, you'll get it cheaper. But it does seem strange. It's not out yet still. Dan, hello. Uh, I want to say a big thanks for your videos. Just watched your Tesla bids before ordering one. Convinced me to get the car. Best purchase you've ever made. Oh, nice. Well, glad you enjoyed the videos and, and you're enjoying the car. Um, how long have you had the car now? And um, yeah, what, what's your first impressions? Matt, standard company car in white, which I was a bit dubious about. I love it. Yeah, I think the, the white does look really good. Hello to Durham. Um, as regards to your webcam, you may need to disable your webcam in Windows. I'm actually using a Mac, and at the moment, it is selected as my webcam. And uh, on, on a Mac, you, you, you can't. You can select your microphone, but you can't select which camera is being used. Usually, you do that on the on the software, and it was letting me select it. So I've got a really decent camera here on the right, and uh, it's just using the crappy MacBook Pro's webcam, which is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, um, Mark, thinking about getting the enhanced autopilot, waiting to see if they do a monthly subscription. 
Yeah, I actually had the trial. I don't know if you've seen the video on the channel. I actually had um, <clears throat> a two-month trial of the enhanced autopilot. And I, I've got to say, I was a little disappointed. I think for the price, I think it was three and a half grand. It didn't really do much more than than standard autopilot. You know, standard autopilot, I do a lot of long trips. You can whack it on, keeps you in your lane. That's about it, but it does a really good job. With the enhanced, it will change lanes for you, but it asks you to kind of nudge the steering wheel. You have to indicate. And I just felt for, for that feature, if I'm doing that to the steering wheel, often say three and a half grand, and then the parking wasn't that accurate. It just wouldn't park very well into any of the white spaces. And um, yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't very, very good at all. So I don't know. Sometimes Tesla do do free trials of enhanced autopilot around this time of year and around a, about the end of the financial year, about April. So it might be worth holding out till then to see if you get a, a free trial just to try it out first and, and definitely check out the, uh, the video. Um, so Dan, you've had yours since July. It's amazing. Uh, not sure about the latest software update. I'm not either. I'm not either. I've just done another video today, actually, um, about the update, about the things I kind of like and dislike. And I feel like they're they're just hiding things under two or three more taps. I think when you have a, a user interface or a software update, it should be easier or faster or easier and faster if you can, if you can do both. And I think some of the features, let me know what you guys think. It's harder because it's hidden behind two steps before it just being on the screen and say doing the screen to Misty, you could just tap it or the heat seat and just tap it and it would come on. Now it's like pressing the little car, finding the sub menu it's in and then finding the feature. It's not hard, but it's it's not easier than it was. So yeah, I'm not, not feeling great about version 11 either. Um, agree with you there, Sam. Yuval, hope I pronounced your name correctly there. It's a shame you cannot get Waze on the Tesla. I know, I know. I was a big, big fan of Waze. Just because you've got potholes on there, it has uh, speed cameras and police. Yeah, so I really hope they they do bring it back. What I'd love to see on the Tesla is, is an app store so you could download and, and choose some of the apps that you'd like. Hey, Clive. Um, hi, Mark. In the latest update, how do you quickly save dash cam footage immediately after an incident on the road? So yeah, I've been playing around with that. You can do it with a voice command. You can say, record that, and, and that should work. But it doesn't always work with the voice. The other option is you can honk your horn and it will record. But sometimes, even though that's quick, I sometimes like to record it just something weird happens, but I don't want to make everyone jump if I'm just standing in traffic and you know someone's fallen off their bike and I want to record that. So you do have to go to a menu. Uh, sorry, don't go to a menu. You go to your apps. And then you'll see dash cam in there and you'll have to select it and, and tap record is, is a bit a bit of a backward step, I think. Um, Matt, you have enhanced autopilot and really only use it for auto park, which is super useful. Yeah, I would all actually pay for auto park. I think if they did a separate upgrade, 500 pounds, something like that, I would pay to add the parking. So yeah, agree with you there. Tyrone, I'm waiting for a huge autopilot upgrade in the UK or spend any cash. Definitely, definitely. I really want to get to the point where we don't have to hold the steering wheel uh, for very, you know, I think we should all hold it, but at the minute, you know, you get the notification every few minutes and um, it would be great just to have it, maybe like set to a minute or two. So when you are on like a 60 mile straight bit of road, you can at least just leave it on and, and kind of enjoy autopilot. Um, uh, you'd be looking at Streamlabs, obviously. Yeah, so this is the weird thing. So I ha have done, I've used Streamlabs before. That is a great, great suggestion, great app. And Sorry. Zoom. Could you oh, Apple Watch is going off. Um, and I've used this a few times with Zoom and other things. It's worked fine. So I do need to look at it. The problem with these live streams, you can't test it out before you, you go live, which is frustrating. And then once you're live, you can't change the settings. Um, so apologies about the audio quality and the video quality. Um, do you have the black thing added on the front, uh, on the back wind mirrors? I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, Mr. Man, let me know. Um, what should I bring with me when I pick up a Tesla? I've, I've actually created a little checklist that I found, well, I found one online and I've just added some things to it that, that have been added since 2021. So I think if you go to my collection day video, in there should be a link to a little checklist I've made. So you can print that off, take that with you. And it's just things like checking that the, the um, seatbelts all plug in or your 
brake lights work, just a massive checklist of things to check. So definitely check out that video if you haven't seen that. Um, Matt, agree, not fond of the new UI. I was getting used to the old one, then it changed overnight. I found myself going through more menus to find simple things. Yeah, I think that's the main thing. It's, it's simple things, isn't it, that we all used to be able to do with a tap. And now not only moved, which makes it a little bit tricky, but you get used to that. But they're they're behind sub menus. I really don't get it. I really don't get it. Um, Deep Space Kitty. I have a rear wheel drive on order. My biggest worry is phantom braking. From what I read, it makes cruise practically un unusable for many people. To be honest, it, it's it's not as bad as I think as as you would you would think. It does happen every now and again. I've had one serious one where it broke really hard almost like a, an emergency stop, but there's no other cars around me. So I think, A, that could have been really dangerous or would it have not done it if cars were behind me? I don't really know. Other than that, I mean, I've done nearly 10,000 miles on the car since March and it's only really done it once or twice. So honestly, it's pretty good, especially if you're just using it on the motorway, give yourself a bit of room from everyone else. It, it's pretty good. Honestly, it's um, surprising how good it is. And it, it really does make long journeys um, a lot easier. Um, Matt, YouTube, YouTube live is a bit poor. Yeah, agree there. Cheers, Mark. Uh, checklist for voice commands, very good. I've shared with this with friends. Yeah, it's good. They, I don't know about you guys as well. I was going to mention this in another video. Since version 11, a lot of the voice commands don't seem to be working very well for me. They seem to cut out halfway through sort of an instruction or it's getting words wrong. Like I was doing things like, open glove box and it was coming up on the screen use dropbox which i thought was weird you can't even get dropbox on a tesla so why is it recognizing things like that and i found that a lot of the voice commands i used to use every day it's just not recognizing what i'm saying so i'm not not sure what's happened there um i hope they tweak the new software rather than revert to the old one yeah i agree i i kind of wished what they would have done to start with is put the how the new software looks and put that on the old one. So almost like done it slowly over time, just put the new user interface, adjusted the, the current one that we were, like version 10 that we were used to and upgraded that and then taking it from there, it seemed like quite a big jump um, for not really any huge major features apart from Life Century, which is cool. And um, the blind spot, which is, which is really, really good. Um, <clears throat> So, hey, Tony, good to have you on board. Um, March 2021, uh, Santa um, Rain, should I upgrade for 275 heated seats and steering wheel? Really don't need rear seats, so uh, it would just be with the heated steering wheel. Mm, tough one. It's a lot of money, isn't it, 275? Um, before this car, I'd never had a heated steering wheel. A friend had, and he said it was like the best thing ever, and I always felt like it wasn't worth it. Now I've got one. I think it possibly is worth it. I get quite cold hands. And in winter, I think the best thing about Tesla is you can heat it up before you get out to the car. So it's a really nice feeling though. And everything's demisted, everything's melted off the car, your seat's warm, your, you know, your steering wheel's warm, you don't have to wear gloves. So it is a good, it is go for it. It is a good feature. <laughs> um Matt, uh, more customization would come and more shortcuts would be great. Yeah, definitely hundred percent. Um, hey Typhoon. Um, thoughts on the LFP battery. I, I haven't delved too much into the LFP battery. It seems from what I've read, and I might be, you, you might want to check this, but they've made the 0 to 60 times slower, uh, given a slightly bigger battery. So you, it's like that balance of you get more miles or more mileage, but you do get a slower to 0 to 60. So, you know, it depends, I guess, what, what you like. I think a lot of people on the Tesla do like a fast the fast car is one of the things I think a lot of people get a Tesla for. So it's, you know, it was tricky. The only problem is you don't really have an option now. Um, Yuval, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is, is it Yuval? Yuval? Um, I would like to see a larger speedometer and battery indicator. Yeah, me too. They have made that a little bit smaller as well. Definitely. Um, you've done 20,000 miles. Nice. I've done 10. Um, did Axel... Hello. Um, did you get your rattles in the Model 3 fixed? Yes and no. So they fixed some of them and um, they were okay for a few days. A couple of them have come back in the rear. Um, and I don't know if you saw the video I did on the, the um, squeaky windows. A couple of those have come back as well. And I think it's...
even though the sides of the rubber were very dry and they were causing a squeak, there's actually, I think, a part inside the door. So I'm going to try and get a little bit of the the, the uh, liquid on a brush and just brush it down and see if I can fix it again. So some things fix, some things are a bit squeaky and the rattles are a bit annoying. You know, when you've spent this much money in a car, I went into my step, uh, not step, um, my father-in-law's Ford, um, Ford Focus, which is about 10 years old and that has no squeaks or rattles. So it is frustrating when you've got a brand new car and it's all a little bit rattly. Um, oh, sorry. Comments are coming in fast. Um, 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 thoughts on the Model Y? Um, yeah, from Berlin. Really good. I mean, Germany are renowned for making good quality cars. Whether they'll make the Tesla good any better, who knows? You know, it could just be the the way things are kind of rushed through. I, I don't know, maybe affects the build quality, but... I've actually been to Porsche and Mercedes and BMW. I went to Stuttgart once and we did a tour of all the factories and just how clean they are, how much people care about them. So I think a car coming from Germany probably will improve the quality a little bit, I would I would have thought. But yeah, interesting, isn't it? It's going it's to be interesting to see what it's like. Um, hey, James, Thomas. Hi, Mark. I've ordered a new Model 3 long range with the white interior. How's yours holding up? Uh, I've considered ceramic coating upon delivery. Thoughts on that? So good, good question. So the white interior, um, I've done 10,000 miles. Perfect. Not not a mark on it. I did, I mean, I've had marks on it. But they just come off with a, a baby wipe. So really good. Not, not aged at all as yet. The car's nearly a year old, 10,000 miles. So far, so good. And I, I just think the, the light that you get added into the, the cabin from having white seats, especially because you've got the glass roof, it's really nice. I, I really do like it. Um, ceramic coating it. Yeah, I'm kind of against it personally, just because I think there's there's like two sides. I think one, you want to protect your car, you know, it's a good big investment. But the other half is what why should why should we have to spend another couple of grand protecting the paint which should be good quality? Now my paint hasn't flaked off as as much as I've seen some people's, you know, along the skirts and stuff. But I do have now like a couple of stone chips. So so, a couple of people have told me a ceramic kind of wouldn't fix that. It still doesn't sort of sort out stone chips. So I, I don't know. I, I'd say it's really up to you. It does look nice. I've seen a ceramic coated one. I was talking to a guy, a super um, a supercharger, and it actually looks a lot shinier. And the black, if, if you've got the black color, is a solid black. It is shiny, but the, the ceramic coating does make it look proper shiny, really nice. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one. Tony, uh, you're costing me money, but thanks for your opinion. No worries, Tony. No worries. Uh, Robert, is there anything you miss from your Jaguar? So, yeah, I, so I've had quite a few cars. I always used to get secondhand cars, quite high mileage because I do a lot of mileage. So I've had, you know, Jaguar F-Types, Mercedes, C-Class. I had a secondhand Porsche Boxster. And these were all roughly, apart from the, the F-Type, like 15 grand and under. But all great cars. The, the F-Type was about 30 grand. Um, and to be honest, I miss the look of it. I miss the sound of it. Sounds really, really nice. Other than that, the Model 3 beats it hands down for everything else. I mean, the Model 3 is faster than it, but it's, um, you know, it was a bit rattly. The sound system was bad in the F-Type. Um, it obviously used a lot of fuel, but it did sound good. It did. So I think it's, I think it's the sporty looks I miss the most. The sporty sound and the sporty looks. It really did look nice in my, in my opinion. So yeah, I do. I do now. Do uh, yeah, I do miss that. Eval, ah, good, good to know. I've pronounced it properly. Um, Clive, I found that phantom braking mainly happens on the right hand bends when there's another vehicle in the inside lane. Yeah, me too. Me too. I found that. I've, I found a few people have said it's like shadows as well. I think I've got a theory. I, I'm not sure if it's the the shadows it's detecting. You know, when you go uh, under an underpass and there's a road above you. I actually think it's because for a second, the car, imagine the road above you is a, is a 40 miles an hour and you're on a 70. I wonder if the car for a second thinks you're, you're now in a 40, so it tries to like slow you down really fast. I don't know. But yeah, but actually said that said, mine happened in the middle of kind of nowhere, really. Um, James, likely the Model Y will come from China for us. I believe uh, they are already set up with rear 
uh, right hand drive and in the future maybe switching to berlin yeah definitely matt the thing is with coating cars if you wash it yourself take care of the car it's worth it if you take it to a local car wash be it hand washing machine you're wasting your money um i'll let you guys decide that one um my model 3 performance has done thirty thousand miles the white seats are like new i generally use just unscented baby wipes every three week yeah every few weeks i found the same to be honest i think um and i wear jeans every day black jeans dark blue jeans i've got a black coat um i saw some videos before i got mine people saying you know you, you won't be able to wear jeans it will just get ruined my seats have been perfect you know i don't think there'd be any less marked if i had a black seat i think the problem is really with the tesla seats as a lot of you may know they're not they're not le leather they're vegan vegan leather which means that essentially plastic but um so i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing you know vegan leather or fake leather used to be pretty bad in cars but this is pretty good it's not scratched at all either so what hiccups not um scratched at all either which is pretty good um matt so only way to properly properly protect your pain is with a ppf which is mega money yeah i mean that's the thing like when you think about how much PPF costs or ceramic coating to do them properly, you're prob probably talking like a few thousand pounds. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to ride mine out, see how it goes. And if in two to three years, I've got four or five stone chips, even if I take it to um, oh, those places like uh, these companies that kind of paint up, paint up stone chips really well, even that I looked at that, it was like 600 pounds to, to like cover up to about 10 stone chips. And they come to your drive and they do it and it looks looks great. So I just thought, even though a stone chip doesn't look great, I could do that two or three times and it would still be cheaper than the, the PPF or the ceramic coating. So that's kind of the route I went down, to be honest. Um, any more questions though, guys? Maybe getting a Tesla for the first time or um, what things, if you own a Tesla, what things do you love and hate about the Tesla? And do you have any questions about any of the videos either? Um, a few people have asked me kind of what gear I use and, and how long it takes, takes to make a video, that kind of stuff. So happy to answer any of those kind of questions too. Um, are there any known quirks in the Tesla associated with left-hand driving? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, no, not that, I'm, not that I'm aware of. There might there could be, but not that I'm aware of. One thing I definitely recommend to, uh, to, to you all if if you haven't joined already there's some really good tesla facebook groups online um and just great community of tesla users and uh before i started doing these videos before I, I got my car they really helped me answer some of the just like simple questions you know it, i think when you have a tesla you kind of you forget what it was like the very first few days where it's like well, there's no car key how, how do i get in the car or how do i set up the, the phone and, and things like that so Definitely worth joining a a, a, a you know a, a Facebook group if you are new to the Tesla world. Beware though, there are some like proper aggressive Tesla fanboys who, if you say anything bad about Tesla, they will try to chop your head off. Um, so be careful. Um, Clive, any mud flaps you can recommend without looking terrible? So I actually went for the the um, official Tesla ones. They were they're in the boot in the car. And I heard about that before I went to pick it up. So I just asked them if they could install it. There's two sizes, like a large one that needs to scrape to the floor or, or a half size. So I asked them to install those before I picked up the car, which which they did. And they've been good. They do collect a little bit of dirt behind them. But I mean, when you wash the car, that comes out. So the official Tesla ones have been, been okay. They've done the job. I've got no dents or scratches. So check them out. I mean, if you can get some third-party ones cheaper, um, you know, go go for them. I'm not even sure how much the Tesla ones are, but just check in your car. Actually, they may be. You know, with the with the booters, I'm pretty sure they they put put a little pack in where you with your charging cable, so you may already have some. Um, or if you haven't picked up your car, uh, Mark, do you have a home charger or rely on su uh, supercharging or public charging? I don't have a home charger actually. So since March, when I got the car, and I've just been relying on public charging and and supercharging but mainly just regular public charging you know the sort of slow stuff and it was one thing when all the groups i went on they were like there's no way you're going to have an electric car and be able to have a 
decent experience without home charging. And to be honest, it's been fine. I mean, I think I'm lucky. I live in Manchester, so big city, lots of public chargers around. But I think, you know, uh, one of the 50 kilowatts is in the supermarket we use, so I go there. By the time we've done our um, supermarket shopping, the car's fully charged. So I found it even easier than going to get petrol because we would go to the supermarket anyway. I plug it in there. We come out, it's fully charged and you don't charge every single day. It's just like a petrol car. You charge when, when you, when you need to, um, in the city where, where my office is, there's a BEV charger and you can charge in those bays for up to four hours and, and it's free. Well, it was free. It's, it's paid now, but that would give me about a 50 to 60% charge. So what I would do is just twice a week, maybe on a Monday, maybe on a Thursday or Friday, I'll just leave it there. Um, park it before work at lunchtime, just go walk back to the car and move it into a, a regular parking space. So to be honest, it's been really good. Obviously, I prefer to have a home charger, um, but we may be moving. So um, I it just didn't get one installed. And we've got a long kind of garden, a thin, narrow garden. So we couldn't actually put one in. Um, do I think the referral code, pro, uh, referral program will come back? Mark, uh, no, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. It's just a shame, really, because obviously a lot of people, I think like me, who start making the videos, I like making videos anyway, so I would have done it without them. But I know a lot of people start creating content because of those referral miles. But I know I always think it's a win-win. If you've got loads of people creating videos and content, they get a thousand free supercharger miles, and then you do as well. So it was a win-win for everyone. And it's a shame when you think about it. It's only a little bit of electric. It's not much. A thousand miles is probably like 20 quid, 28 quid, maybe to Tesla, probably even less. Five, I think they should, I really think they should have kept it because it was a nice Brucey bonus uh, for having a Tesla. Um, PR, is it normal for the car to shudder and vibrate when the um, HVAC kicks in, especially during the cold weather? To be honest, it's something that I have noticed actually more recently, the car making a lot more noise and fans spinning up higher. and there's been loads, I don't know if you've noticed in the updates, cold weather improvements. Maybe that's something to do with it. I'm not sure, but I have noticed it. it's a lot more noisy than it used to be. Um, when you say shudder, how how much are we talking? I, I do feel it in the car. It's not like a proper, you know, but I definitely feel the, the noise of the fans kicking in. Glenn, if you were buying again, would you buy a long range or go for the revised, um, do you mean standard range? I think... Um, I would still go long range. Um, my family are from Norfolk, sort of Norwich, Great Yarmouth Way, and I live in Manchester. And then I've got relatives in Chichester, and we go to Cornwall quite a lot. So I always want the maximum range I, I can get. Um, and even though, like, the performance in the long range, there wasn't really much in it, I just thought, I, I don't know how these batteries are going to perform. So for me, I would still go for the long range, also because you've got all the heat stuff included. Um, you'd have to pay any extra for, and um, it's faster, which I, I like. I've always quite liked sports cars, so the fact of being faster and you can make it even faster, um, I would go for the long range again. Um, Matt, you'll find most supermarkets will have free charges, mostly three hours, some are even 22, which is a massive bonus. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we went to a garden center, which has like a little supermarket bit attached to it just before this live stream, and there's a 22 kilowatt free charger there. So even though I was in there for half an hour, I probably used 4% of the battery driving up there. It gave me 8%. So I had enough, you know, give me a free trip. And uh, yeah, in a lot of the supermarkets, they're still free. It won't last forever, this free stuff, but, you know, it's it's not bad. And I th I think if you, as well, if you're thinking of moving home, you've got a way up as well. Even if you pay for some of the public charges, some of them are like 25p per kilowatt hour. So that's still going to be cheaper paying that for a year or two than installing your own home charger. So depending on where you live, I mean, where, where I lived back in Norfolk, um, you know, there, there's no charges around near my dad. So you would pretty much have to have a home charger, I think. Otherwise, it would be a pretty bad experience. So have a look at ZapMap. ZapMap is a, a good download, plug share. And then if you haven't got Tesla, this is um, you can see where all the public charges are around your way. So if you look at Manchester, you'll see there's just like thousands, probably thousands all around Manchester. If you look in Norwich, there's tons where I'm from. Um, look around your way as well and, and let me know if, there's, if you see tons of charges. But um, in some places, there still aren't very many. Certain parts of Cornwall, when we go down there, 
really don't have any charges, or they'll have two and they've always taken. So you do have to look out for that. Um, Tony, uh, the blind spot camera needs moving. I block half the image with my left hand most of the time. Um, I've actually filmed a video today, Tony, about the pros and uh, the, the things I love and what well, I love and hate, the things I dislike about this update. And that that is in there. I drive like that. And then, yeah, the, the video is blocked by, by my fist. So I really hope they give you the option to move that around in the future. No one man is a Model 3 value for money compared to other EVs. Um, yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, when I got mine, I you know, there wasn't a huge amount of EVs to choose from. It's definitely growing now. But I think I think when you when you buy a Tesla, you're obviously getting probably, I would say, a rethink of how a car is. It's so simplistic, it's just a screen. It's very, very simple, the glass roofs and everything. So you're you're buying into like the future a little bit. You get the supercharger network, which I don't think can be overlooked if you do long journeys. If you're just driving around town, forget about it. But if you're like me and you do a lot of UK holidays, you've got family everywhere, um, the supercharger network is a lifesaver. Definitely worth it. That adds value to me, you know, because you, as yet you can't use those with any other EVs. It's very fast. It, you know, like this, this car is, even though it looks like, to be honest, a very normal looking car, it's faster than every kind of sports car I had. I had a Porsche Boxster, the F-Type, you know, Mercedes, all these secondhand used cars that were sports cars and and this car is faster than that so yeah I, I think it's very expensive don't get me wrong it's very very expensive car um for me I, I run my own business so there are tax benefits as well you you're allowed to put electric cars through a business and um it, where some some you're not there used to be this, this this thing called benefit in kind where you would pay tax on the value of the um the car you know for having the car from a business with electric vehicles, there's 0% or I think 1% now. So it's very cheap for me to have the electric car compared to buying a new one or having that F-Type. So I don't think it's bad value. You know, it's not great value, but it's as far as EV goes, I think it's pretty good. Uh, Matt, I've been looking to the superchargers around the country and noticed there's a price difference. Granted, not a lot. I think it should be the same regardless. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I kind of tend to agree. I, I have noticed that. I, luckily, thanks, thanks to... Few of you guys who have bought using my um referral miles i've still got three miles at the moment but i do check the prices just before i use them and some are like 48 pence per kilowatt hour some are 22 23p still and um when you start getting to that higher bracket of, of 43 pence per kilowatt hour you're not far off petrol pri diesel prices petrol prices really because the, the Tesla, no matter what they say, you don't get 360 miles in the long range unless you're driving it like the Pope. So I, I do, my personal thoughts are that you don't, for a, a, you don't get anywhere near 360 miles. You probably get like 280, 290 on a, on a motorway long journey. And if you're paying a higher tier for that electric and it's being used up very fast, it's not going to be that much cheaper than, than petrol or diesel before long. So yeah, I think I think they should make it cheaper. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, Yuval, is Tesla spying on me with the in-cabin camera? You have to ask Elon Musk on that one. Apparently not, but technically they could, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think so. But then you've got to ask yourself, why is the camera there? It, they must be recording you for some purpose, you know. So, yeah. Have you seen any drop in the battery since owning the car? To Tobor? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's it's the weather's changed so much here. And I don't know if you're in the UK as well, but, you know, we had a very cold March last year, very hot summer, kind of mild winter, then freezing, then it's very mild again now. So it's it's hard to tell in an EV. You know, when you've got a petrol car, you can say, right, this is going to do 350 miles. With an EV, the weather really changes things up a lot. So I really don't know. I, I've noticed it goes up and down a little bit. I don't think I've lost much, though, to be honest, maybe 5%, if if anything at all, which is pretty good. Um, Deep Space Kitty. Um, here's the US. The MP is good value. Some base models be cheaper. Um, where, you, where are you all from, by the way? Let me know in the comments where, where you all are. Um, seen a video today, Ryan Shaw. He shows that you can move the screen so the blind spot monitors are on the far side so your hands don't block your view. I haven't seen that um that's good to know how does he do that and and does he have fsd
because I've, I've seen some on, on the FSD in the US, you can move the slider of, of how big you want the map to be. But I did check that. You can't do that here in the UK. So I don't know if that's an FSD thing, but I'd love to be able to move that. So yeah, let me let me know in the comments. Um, I missed the speed limiter on the Kia. You set a max speed at 40 miles an hour. Unless you kick down, it won't go over that speed. Um, it, yeah, it does have that. You can change that in the settings, uh, Gobel. Um, Gobel, Gremlin. Yeah, you can change it in the settings. I think it's under autopilot. Someone else may know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's under autopilot. And you can set the max speed to be the speed limit and then a percentage or, or points under that as well. So it is there. Yeah, definitely there. Um, the in camera is said to be there for FSD and should have the opportunity to de deactivate it. You can buy those little stickers as well that go across the camera. Uh, Matthew Coleman, welcome. Um, looking at getting a Model 3 long range via salary sacrifice. £461 per month, but no deposit. Home charger installed, insurance, tyres maintained, recovery all included. I reckon that's a good deal. That that sounds pretty good to me for, you know, essentially a 50 grand car. And with all those perks as well, it means you can you can charge at home a lot cheaper if you use uh, Octopus Go or something like that. And insurance and tyres maintained. Matthew, I think you've got a good deal there. I'd, I'd go for that. Um Matt, not far down the road in Stoke. Hello, Stoke, Northwest London. Hello, Burnley. Hello. Um, Tony, if Tesla wants me to pick my nose, yeah, let them. Yeah, definitely. Roy, hello. Uh, electric stop button on the seat doesn't appear anymore when clicking seatbelt. Uh, so, Roy, on that one, do you mean um, if you've got like a bag on the seat and it starts beeping at you, you can't stop it? I, I think I did notice that the other day as well, which is frustrating um so yeah I, I hope that can be activated i sometimes have you know especially when i'm filming i'll have my camera bag on there and i don't want to put it on the floor because i sometimes need to reach in there just to change the, the camera stuff for the video so yeah I, I want that back too chicago hey never been to chicago but i'd love to go there um any thoughts on lucid shares will it be a good buy and a hold for the future love to hear what you think greetings from portugal hello philippe in portugal I've just been to porto absolutely love portugal love it um, so Lucid shares. Yeah. I mean, the reviews of the Lucid Air have been really, really good. It looks like a great car. Um, there don't seem to be any, you know, like panel gaps, paint issues, the things that you get with Tesla. Um, I, I think I feel in terms of shares, um, as many of you may know, I've done a couple of videos on shares and I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm big into my shares. I, I think a lot of the EV stocks and shares are, a bit overvalued at the moment. So it's it's a tricky one, really. I think for me, Tesla, was, it was always clear that it was going to shoot up because they they had like the first mover advantage. But Lucid Air, I, I really, I don't know. I'm tempted to get some. I haven't actually bought any yet. Uh, I did have some and then sold and, and, and um, you know, I don't know if I should get them again is what I mean. Sorry. Um, so it's a tricky one. I I, I don't know. It's, it's more the brand. When I, when I buy a share, I, I think of the brand. Um, is someone the average person who's thinking of getting an EV is Lucid Air going to stick pop in their mind? At the moment, I don't think it will. So the question is: In three years' time, will they be more of a household name? If you think the answer is yes, I'd go for it. But yeah, very tricky. But it's nice to see. Nice to see the competition. I think. Um, good tip there, for Matt. <clears throat> you tap the speed limit sign three times, and that'll drop your speed to the current speed limit. Stuart Anthony, hello from Salford Keys. Hello. Yeah, I'm up there quite often. Um, hope they open the Trafford Centre Superchargers soon. I know, me too. Yeah, they've been putting them in for a long time. And um, for you and me, <clears throat> that will be our closest superchargers. So, yeah, I'm hoping they can uh, can install them. That would be a big, big plus for me. Big plus. Uh, Matthew Coleman. Ooh, thanks. No worries. Denmark out of Essex. Is there a Denmark in Essex? I, I never knew that. Hello, Mr. One Paranoid. Um, Gobel Gremlin, Matthew Coleman, check the mileage allowance. It may be only 5,000 miles per annum with penalties per mile. Good point. Very good point. Um, Siggy19, I've seen a small plastic clip accessory you have put in the seatbelt connection to halt the alarm if you have items on your seat. Hmm. I actually saw, I was thinking of doing a video, I saw a thing, a little weight that you can put on your steering wheel to stop the uh, autopilot thing going off but i thought it's probably a well more than a little dangerous very dangerous so i didn't do a video on that in the end 
but uh, I didn't even buy it in the end. But yeah, some cool little accessories you can get though. Um, Tabor, Tabori, um, would you ever consider going back to an internal combustion engine? So I was having this chat with my brother-in-law a couple of days ago, and I think, I think for my main car, no. I think I think what will happen with um, old cars. I do like kind of old older sports cars or like just cars I like from 10 years ago you know and um as I say I've always bought kind of second-hand cars but cars that were might have been 70 80 grand for someone I, I picked them up at like 15 when they've got 100,000 miles on so I, I think I think like the f-type the other day I think I wouldn't go back to one as my main car but in the future I could see myself maybe having like you know the Tesla as my main car and then like a little ho hobby car you know like a Mercedes SLK or Porsche box. So I quite like convertibles, you know, when it's sunny. So a little two seater sports car that is just, just for the weekend. But, but I don't know. I, I think it's hard once you have an EV to actually go back, I, you know, um, Chicago, definitely worth a visit. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I'll, put, I'll definitely put on that on the list. Um, not sure the police would be happy with the clip and the seatbelt thing. Yeah. You'd probably avoid your, your insurance as well if, uh, you left in and crashed too, so be careful of that. Hello, Ed Essex as well. Hello, Will. Will Cruz, anyone else blown away with the new base sub update? Why were they hiding this from us? I know. Why? why uh, it was not really mentioned either, but um, yeah, nice little update. And it does make quite a big difference as well. So it's been nice playing around with that. Nice little update, that nice little update. Oh, originally from Essex, now in Denmark. Um, I actually have... Um, so, my other business editors keys I, I we got our stuff made in denmark so i'm often in copenhagen so i don't know how far you are from copenhagen but hello to denmark and uh scroll scroll um any plans on doing some more videos on buying shares i'm a complete novice and would like to know more about the do's and don'ts i i am i i when i did my last one i actually had a couple of um legal people get in touch there's a, a legal thing in the uk we're not allowed to give financial advice so if I do it, I have to be very care careful about what I say because I'm not allowed to tell you to do something or not to do something. I, you know, even if even if it's um, glaringly obvious, me saying just don't do this. This is a mistake that can be seen as financial advice. So all I can really do is is tell you what I've done, and I have to kind of leave it there, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, I'm planning on doing some more stocks and shares videos. Um, but again, it you know, unfortunately have to be just about what, what I've done myself. Um, it's not really allowed to be opinion based, which is crazy because I, I see a lot of channels that do, but obviously I don't really want to get into, into trouble with that. Uh, Cliff, I don't think you shout enough about the hi-fi. It is a very good sound system, actually. Uh, very good. It's the best sound system I've had in any, any car. Um, I've had quite a few incidents of phantom braking, so I'm a bit nervy and cover the accelerator somewhat defeats the object what's your experience do you have a workaround yeah I, I as i said i've only had a couple of experiences of it so I, I i it depends where i am if i'm on a motorway and there's like no cars around me and it's a nice straight motorway I, i'm fine just letting it do its thing do its thing but if i use it on more of kind of like the a roads and things and it's busy or there's cars i do hover a little bit um just because if you've ever had why pilot go off it goes off like the last second so you know you're turning on a corner it just turns off so it's quite it could be quite dangerous you know so yeah I, I do hover um why is elon considering opening up his network for any ev giving away his usp ser uh, seriously do you have to be a techno geek to enjoy tesla i'm from sheppy in kent hello so i think so my theory on Elon opening up the supercharger network is I think from following sort of Elon's journey a little bit, he 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 said once in an interview that he's not really bothered if Tesla completely fails as long as the EV market continues and he's kind of done his bit to kind of um, change the adoption of EVs. So I, I wonder if the plan behind the scenes, let me know what you think about this, is to become the new BP Shell Texaco of EVs. If he can keep growing the supercharger network at the moment, you know, it's not, it's not big enough yet. But if he can keep growing it to a point where currently where every petrol station is, there's superchargers. I wonder if Tesla will make more money 
from becoming the new petrol stations of the future because you can see Shell, BP, and everyone, they're falling so far behind. The occasional one has one fast charger. But um, the, the superchargers are so fast. You know, they're more than 50 kilowatts. They're fast. They're easy to use. I just don't know how they're going to integrate it, though. That's the problem. I, You know, they're going to surely only going to be available for, for newer cars with a Tesla sort of integration. They can probably charge more. So I think they'll probably penalize, you know, if you own the Porsche Taycan, they'll probably charge you more to use a supercharger. So instead of, I think where you'll get the benefit is Tesla might be 30p a kilo, per kilowatt hour. If you've got a Porsche, it might be 45, 50p per kilowatt hour. I agree though, it is it is annoying, I think, when you've bought into Tesla because that was part of the network and now I'm going to open up to everyone as a Tesla owner. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit frustrating, but I can see I can see why they're going to do it. And that's my my theory. Let me know in the comments what you, what you think of that theory. Uh, Tony, Peterborough Council offer good charging options and are free to use or free parking too. Yeah, definitely. Hello to Peterborough, not too far from my home place. Uh, Rob Kimberly, no base sub update on the standard range. I didn't know that. That's a shame. Um, Matt, could you not have a disclaimer at the start of the video? Apparently, the, the disclaimer doesn't cover it. I have seen people say that. Um, yeah, apparently, the disclaimer doesn't doesn't cover it because, because you're still offering financial advice. Um, it's, it's in the UK. It's, it's a lot stricter than some other countries. Skull. Uh Mike, that was a Danish reference, by the way. That's, that's skull is uh, cheers in Danish. And I was told this, you may know being in Denmark, that it's called skull because the, the Vikings used to chop off the heads of their enemies and then drink from their, their skull. Don't know if that's true or not. Check it out. Uh, Mike, just experienced my first very cold days here in Germany. Hello, Germany. Uh, down to minus eight degrees. The decrease in range of my 2021 long range was significant. Do you, did you experience the same? Yeah, I did. I've, I've actually filmed. So um, I've just filmed a winter range video, which I've, I haven't edited yet, from Manchester to Norwich. The problem was it wasn't that cold. It was it was meant to be like zero degrees. So I thought perfect time to do a video. And then on the drive, it was like five and then went up to nine degrees. So it wasn't a, a fair reflection. But I did notice last year when it was snowing here, the range, I think, went down to 50%. I did put this on a Tesla Facebook group at the time that I, I felt like my range had gone easily 40%. And they just had Tesla fanboys just saying, oh God, this happens in ice cars as well. And sell your car if you're not happy with it, all that kind of aggressive attitude you get sometimes if you if you say anything bad about a Tesla. But um, yeah, I, I have really noticed a, a big drop in range, um, which I have never noticed with a petrol or a diesel car. And um, I... Obviously, I can't precondition my car as well without a home charger, so that may help. But I, I unfortunately think it is one of those things. And I've got the heat pump as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I did notice a big difference. What kind of range loss were you seeing, Mike? Do you think like 10%, 20%, 50%? What, what were you seeing? And anyone else as well, if you've driven it in zero or minus um, minus temperatures, what have what have you seen? Um Luke, hello, Luke. Just ordered a rear-wheel drive Model 3, hopefully collect in March. Very excited. Do you think the rising ha uh, household electric and gas prices could wipe out the fuel savings of an EV? I do. I do. I do think it's going to, I think it's always going to be cheaper, but it's going to, it's going to get closer and closer. Like two years ago was probably the best time to buy an EV. You could get charging rates at like 4p per kilowatt hour. There was free charging everywhere. All that stuff is starting to be ebbed away. It's starting to go away a little bit. So I think it will be cheaper. I think in the future, if you're lucky enough, having solar panels and things like that will will offset that, you know, generating our own energy, I think will be good. Um, and obviously, I think the free ones in supermarkets will eventually disappear. I mean, imagine every car in the car park is a, an EV. Everyone's going to be fighting for the char the free charger. So I, I think it will go away eventually, unfortunately. Um, Philippe, exactly the same theory I have. Good theory. Uh, Tobori, have you driven the Hyundai Ionic 5? I haven't, but um, a neighbor down the road has one and, and quite likes it. Um, I don't know, don't know what he does, but he has, he has, he's had a Hyundai, a Model 3, a Jaguar. Um, I don't know if he just rents them for little periods of time, but he, he's had a lot of EVs and he, he said it is, is a nice car. So I haven't been in it though. Um, crazy, you can be penalized for helping folk. I know, I know, it's tricky. I guess you get a lot of bad actors out there who will try to shill you into 
their schemes and and uh, tell you to buy shares of their company and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mike can confirm my range went down from 320 to 350 max. Mm. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's worth keeping like I, I would like someone to do more tests on that, to be honest, to see. Uh, Rob Rue. I ordered, uh, I ordered a BMW i4 back in August, but it won't be delivered until April. Seriously looked at the Model 3, but wanted a hatchback. Which EV will you be looking at next? So yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big Tesla fan. Obviously, I, I do Tesla videos and I've got, I haven't got it here, but there's a Tesla mug, you know, I'm a big Tesla fan. But I will be, I will shop around when it comes to um, the next car. I'll, I'll think I'll have the, the Model 3 for a good three years yet. But yeah. Um, yeah, I will definitely check out the competition. I've always been a big Mercedes fan. I've always found them to be like super comfortable, build quality. It's just you shut the doors and you get the nice sound, you know. So I, I would shop around. I mean, I'm not going to move cars just to move cars. If the Tesla's still the best option, still has a supercharger network, still quick, you know, still comfortable, everything else, the price, I would go with Tesla. But let's just say there's like a Mercedes or a BMW Model 3 competitor, roughly the same price, but the range is better. The 0 60 is the same. The, the charging infrastructure has changed, but the build quality is 10 times better. I would switch. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What would you guys think? Have you, would you stay with Tesla? Would you look around? What are your thoughts? Um, Stuart, hello. Uh, took a delivery of a SR Model 3 in early December. I was surprised to have the heated seats in the rear and heat steering wheel. I don't recall pressing 275 at update i think it may be actually included in the standard range i i've seen a couple of posts about that so you've either been really lucky yeah or or it is included so yeah that's great that's great um the octopus go tariff at the moment is still good peak level is 24p a kilowatt um and the 5p night rate that's really good i mean 5p cost what four four pound fifty five pounds to charge the car fully so that's that's great um for info, I had a battery replaced on my Model 3 performance after uh, a software update with only 3,000 miles, and they sent me a bill for £14,000, but I retracted it due to warranty. Wow. Um, so that was your entire battery for your car. That's uh, that's crazy. Did they ever say what the, the problem was there? It's one thing I've been worried about, you know, because as we as we know, the, the battery is the engine. It's, it's the most expensive part of the entire car. So, yeah, l let us know where... Why did the battery have to be replaced? Um, hey, John, happy new year and love your work. Happy new year, John. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on the channel. And, and I, re I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you for personalized plate tip. I sold an EV06 GTV to a Kia fan and I have Tesla waiting for my M3 in March. Great stuff. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully it'll be worth a bit of money for you as well in the future. And I think it will. I think it will. I, that's kind of why I got mine. I thought I'm doing these tester videos. I'll add it on as like a little, a little bonus to the videos, you know. And uh, but I thought, I, I think how much did I buy mine? I think I paid a thousand pounds for mine. I just think in two, three, four years, I'll be able to either sell the, the number plate for that price or more, hopefully more. And even if I sell it for less, I mean, you know, it's been been fun while I've had it on the car. Um, Tony looks like smaller hatchback, hatchbacks, ideally. Um, so can see me looking at the Model 2 as it's dubbed in the future. Yeah, I, I keep hearing about the Model 2. What I worry about Tesla is that they keep announcing cars. The, the Roadster, I'm sure they announced that over five years ago now. People have paid deposits. They still haven't delivered that. You know, they announced the, the updated Model S and the Model X. Still not here yet. The Model Y couple of years, it announced years ago, but came out in the US over a year ago, still barely in the UK yet. They seem to announce things and, and take a long time. So my worry with the Model 2 is that they would start charging you a deposit and then it wouldn't come out for four or five years. Um, but it'd be interesting to see. I think that's a really great market for them. You know, if they can do a, a low priced uh, kind of mod, you know, Model 2. What are your thoughts though? Do you think it will devalue the brand if they do do a 25 grand car? What are your thoughts on that? um let's have a look uh love your apple watch strap so cool thanks very much so yeah um just a note on that so part of the channel i know do a lot of tesla videos i'm going to do more and more business videos but um i've started a new brand uh called buckle and band I'm doing um leather this is a, on the sport bands which is silicone and 
leather underneath and we're doing apple watch bands it's www.buckle and band i'll put the link in the in the chat if you want to check it out so this is a brand new business that i've been working on for um over six well probably about eight or nine months now actually just launched it um really really high quality leather bands for apple watches and what i wanted to do with this and what we have been doing is filming the the journey of building a business from scratch because i have another business called edit's keys i've been doing it for 10 years and I've always wanted to document like how, how you start a business, how you do a logo, how you launch a website with like no one knowing about it. And how, do, how do you get it ranked? How do you get people to find out about it? How do you get people to review your products? Um, the sourcing of that, the running of the business. So my plan is as we grow this business, um, you know, I've done all the photography, the videos, all that sort of stuff. Just lay this all out on YouTube. Just so even if you've got a, just an interest in business, you can watch it or if you're starting up your own business or you want to help a friend or family member or you want to do a side hustle everything from starting a shopify store sourcing a product selling a product having staff boring stuff like vat how that process works so it's a re real business i haven't just set up to do videos but um check it out buckleandband.com also if you've got an apple watch let me know in the comments um dm me and um as I did promise, anyone who watches the channel and subscribes to the channel, I'll do, do a discount for you. So um, as, a, as a big thank you for following the channel. Um, Gobel, possibly faulty cells, but not totally sure. RE battery replacement service was excellent. I hadn't had to jack it up, but if you do with the pucks. Um, yeah, the, the, I don't know if a lot of you know, the actual battery cells in a Tesla actually look like AA batteries and there's thousands of them it's not just like one big battery it's actually made up of tiny tiny um, battery cells so I have seen that sometimes how a, an EV explosion is caused it's when you get one faulty cell and that explodes and it creates kind of a chain reaction so yeah uh, could be that but let us know because you don't really hear about it very often I, I would have thought by now with the amount of EVs on the road that we'd have more news stories of EVs blowing up and setting on fire and being in accidents. And it doesn't seem to be, I, you know, I don't know about you, but you hear the odd one in America and stuff, but you, I haven't seen really any around here. I've not never seen one and I've never heard of one locally. Um, Will, Will Wonka. Uh, welcome. Love your videos. Not sure the Model 2 would devalue. Look at BMW, Audi, Land Rover. Way too many models as common as Fords were 15 years ago. Yeah. Good point. And I just wondered that. I think sometimes there's brands, I mean, you take Bosch, when they did the Boxster, everyone's like, oh, if they do a, I mean, it's not cheap, but if they do a cheaper two-seater sports car, it's going to wreck the brand. And it was actually the car that saved the entire company. So could be the, the same for the Tesla. This could be the one that, let's be honest, 50 grand Tesla is a lot of money. If they could do a 25 grand car, you're going to see a lot of people who want to be in the Tesla brand and People who maybe wouldn't buy a brand new car, but they can now suddenly afford like £200 a month for a monthly payment. Supercharger network could be good. Could be good. Um, Apple Watch question. What is the best Apple Watch in my opinion? Um, I've just got the Series 7 just because we were doing um, we were doing videos and, and the photography shoots that you can see on the site for that. So, But I would say the Series 7, I've had the 4. Uh, my wife said the 6. I've got the 7. There's not a huge difference between seven and, and four. So if you're looking for your first Apple Watch, save a bit of money and go for the four, in my opinion. All the straps work across from Series 1 to Series 7. A lot of the features are the same. The battery life's pretty similar. Um, save money and go for the four. That's that's my uh, opinion. And they're like £200 now. So cheap uh, for such a good watch. Matthew Coleman, a uh, close friend of mine has the Model X and his wife has the Model 3 Performance. However, he has a deposit on the Plaid um, truck and the Roadster. Wow. Um, he would be more than willing to let you road test it if you're interested. 100% yes, please. Yes, please. If uh, if he has the Plaid, the truck and the Roadster, any of them, especially the Roadster, uh, yeah, I'd happily test drive those. And if you'd like to uh, me to do some content on them, I'd love to, love to do it. Love making these videos for you guys, and and uh, I would I would love to uh, test drive those cars. So yeah, definitely. Matt, sexy looking straps. Uh, oh, sexy it looks really nice. Would you ever venture into Galaxy straps? Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna see how these go. Um, been doing really well so far. The feedback, every review's been five five stars so far, which is great. About sort of fifty reviews. So yeah, uh, that that's the plan next. Actually, if these do really well, we'll, we'll maybe do Galaxy and, and Fitbit ones too. 
Uh, and the idea is basically to do um, straps that kind of take an Apple Watch, which is quite a techy looking product, and turn it more into an, a timepiece, you know, an actual watch that looks nice. You know, this one is a sport one, but silicone, but with like a, a brown leather strap. So this isn't the best example of that, but it gives you an idea of what the, the cheapest sports one looks like. I've been wearing that today on the workout. Tracy and Don Russell, happy new year. Happy new year to you both too. Hope you had a good one. What did you get up to? Um, Model 2 will sell out like hotcakes. Cybertruck is going to be insane. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what do you all th think of the Cybertruck? I, I still don't know if I love it or hate the look of it. It is a crazy concept car that is going to be real. And how do you think it's going to do in the UK uh, or Europe as well? We're not really like a pickup truck kind of area, but in the US, you know, everyone loves a pickup truck there. So I'm interested in seeing it. Uh, any recommendations on 18 inch or 19 inch nice looking alloys? Um, to be honest, I, I'm kind of like a stock alloy kind of person. I don't like third party alloys on, on a car. That's just my personal opinion. I, I, I kind of like the original looks of them. So I don't really have any uh, recommendations there, unfortunately. Um, cool. So are we all oh, an hour already? So very long video. Thanks so much for joining. If there's any more questions, um, maybe have like another five, 10 minutes. Any questions about anything, about me, about the channel, about videos, about Buckle and Band, business, stock shares, anything. We'll do the last few 10 minutes and um, call it a night. And then, yeah, hopefully if you guys have enjoyed the live chat and would like to do one again, let me know um, in the comments and I'll, I'll try and do another one, but we'll get it all set up properly. Nice lights. I'll do it in the studio and um, we'll, we'll do a much better live stream next time. So I'll just take a few more questions and then uh, I'll bid you farewell, guys. Let you get on, get on with your evening. Um, stock split, possibly, yeah, possibly. I don't know for sure, but possibly. Um, love the cyber truck and it's got me into investing in Tesla. Good good luck. And uh, it's good to be investing in Tesla. Um, well, investing full stop, to be honest. So make sure to spread your bets. Don't put all your, your money in one basket. Uh Asan, uh, what's your view on crypto? Will it go up or down? Uh, I, my, well, so my view on crypto is the, the blockchain, very, very good. It is going to change the face of things. Um, NFTs as well. Um, I won't go too much into those, but crypto and, and NFT, good. There's a lot of cr crap out there, though, a lot of crap coins. Everyone's buying into the, the excitement and everything. So just be super careful. I would just really go, or I've personally gone for kind of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few other than the main ones, just because I think with anything, a bit like Tesla, you know, you stick with a mainstream one and it may not jump like 200% overnight, but it will, um, but it will definitely kind of rise slowly over time so i was trying to thought it will slowly go up over time so be careful i think crypto is in a bit of a bubble at the moment but um it, it's not going anywhere so you know if you can afford to put maybe like five percent of, of your spare money into do that don't put loads in don't don't risk it um thanks matthew enjoy your evening too um do you think combustion engines will become a classic and the value will increase I do. I mean, in Europe, they have to stop selling new ones in 2030, which isn't that far away. It's 2022 now. Um, so I think they will, because they'll just be, you know, think of the nicest cars that you like other than Tesla. And they will initially become devalued because everyone will want an EV. So you'll get these sort of bargains of, of maybe like sports cars, a Porsche 911 or a car that you younger always dreamed of having that you'll be able to pick up quite cheap. And then all of a sudden, once they're crashed or written off, you'll have fewer and fewer, just like classic cars. And um, you'll never be able to buy a combustion engine again. Pet fuel prices are going to go down because the, the demand won't be there. So I think there will be like the secondary market that you're going to have a limited supply of petrol cars, which will increase the price. And you're also going to have no one buying or no one, a bit of exaggeration, less people buying fuel, which means the, the price will go down because the demand won't be there. So yeah, I think I think there will be a secondary market on that. Uh, Roy, thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Um, what's this one? Uh, Toby, don't forget to subscribe and comment on the channel. Thanks. Uh, so how do we... Oh, we can create a poll here. Create an emoji. 
yeah, just, yeah, actually, guys, um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It really does help. It also tells you of uh, when new videos are coming out. And if you hit the, it's a bit of an awkward, but if you hit the notification bell as well, you'll actually be told that when a new video is coming out, subscribing doesn't actually tell you when a new video is coming out. You might see some, but you'll probably miss about 80% of the videos. So um, definitely, definitely do that. Um, so um, I swapped my 20 inch turbine for some 19 inch uh, Electra. I have seen those actually. They look, they actually look quite nice. So good. Will Wonka XRP to the moon. I actually do have XRP, but I'm not sure. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure on XRP. I'm, I, I don't know. Uh, hi, Mark. Have you finished? Have you filmed the video on the Tesla app for Apple Watch? I, I've started filming it. I've, I've done. I, uh, so I've got, in the videos in the, in the pipeline at the minute, I've got uh, a video I filmed today about the things I like and dislike about the version 11 update. Um, I've got the road trip, which is a really long video. It's like going all the way to Norfolk, a bit of Christmas stuff, going to Norwich, going to the Cotswolds, a bit around there. So it's one of the typical kind of road trip videos I do. Um, and then the plan is to do the Apple Watch video. And then the plan is to do the um, 1,500 pounds speed boost that I know a lot of people want to see. So just waiting for a dry day to do that, to be honest. Um, but I just want to say I really appreciate all of you for for watching, subscribing to the channel. It really makes it worth doing. You know, uh, I actually love replying to every single comment that's on on the channel. So uh, it just keeps me motivated to do more and more videos. Um, just getting the questions coming through. So thanks so much. Um, so guys, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call it a night there. Um, thanks so much for joining me again. Thanks so much for for being part of this channel helping it grow and just, just being involved as well. You know, I, I love seeing the comments from you guys. So um, if you want to see more videos, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. So I'm going to bid you all farewell. And um, yeah, really, really do appreciate it. Happy New Year to everyone. And I'll see you all soon.